In this video, we'll use MonoDevelop and Debian Linux to show how you can create .NET solutions that are simple and work across platforms. We'll start with a console application. In the Solutions pane, you can click on New, and if you don't have the some of the solutions on your recent pane, you can click on C Sharp, then Console Project. You can choose a name for your product, and then click on OK. It will create some sample files, including the C-sharp code for the main executable. I'm going to create a library that then we're going to link to the main executable. We collapse the main executable, and then we right-click on the top solution. We select Add, and then New Project. This will be a library. You can choose it from the recent pane, or you can click on C-sharp, then Library again. Select a name for this. I'll use my library. Then click OK. My library again creates several files including the myclass.cs which is a very simple file with some empty methods. What I'm going to do now is refactor a little bit the main method inside the main class of the main executable so it doesn't say hello world but instead it calls an object from the main uh, from the other library that we have linked. Before doing that I need to add a reference. So right click on references then edit references and as you can see I can select from several assemblies that are available on my system or I can click on the projects tab then my library then OK. Now the two projects are linked. So for refactoring we're just going to add a my class test new my class. As you can see this is not auto completing. The reason why it's not doing it is because I haven't used the using statement. So I'll use it now, and as I write this line again, you see how my class is now available, so I can use it to autocomplete throughout the editor. I'll change this write line statement so it now uses a placeholder, and then it calls this. So as you can see, test is just one instantiation of the my class uh, used on the my library site. I can build the application now with F8, or I can also use F5, which will build it in turn. F5 will also open a console, and this console will show hello my library dot my class. This is a simple application that will be portable across operating systems using Mono. Now we're going to close this solution, and we're going to start with an ASP.NET solution. To do that, you click on New, then C Sharp ASP.NET Web Application and you choose a name for your application, in which case I'll use just 0 02. Click OK and you'll get some files in the initial solution ready for um, start uh, the addition process. As you can see I get a default.aspx file which already has some HTML and especially has this method being called on the onclick event for a button. So the button one clicked event is referenced in the code behind file, which is the default.aspx.cs file. I double click on that and I see that the button one click method only changes the text of the button to you click me. I'm going to refactor this a little bit so you can see how we can modify the logic of this simple solution. So I'm going to add a counter. I'm going to call it. and then I'm going to increment it. You'll see uh, how this won't work and it is because the application is an HTTP stateful um, uh, application that basically does not know the state of I across several, several requests and responses. So when I click on run, this will open my browser, I'll get the sample application and when I click on the button I'll just get a lot of ones because the counter is not being carried in several requests and responses. So I'm going to stop debugging now and I'm going to refactor this using the view state component that is included in Mono. So instead of declaring a counter, I'll just use view state and I'll create a property called clicks. Now my, my counter is going to be one if this doesn't exist or just increment it otherwise. I just have to make sure that I'm using 
then I'm uh, late after after the uh, method I'm just saving the right uh, value so I save this now and I run it again browser will open I uh, carry over this across different uh, requests and responses on the same session this application is also portable and I'm going to show you very quickly how you can deploy this to Windows Azure I'm going to use the Azure command line applications which are based on Node.js I already had Node.js, NPM and the Azure model installed on my machine so this means that I can use the Azure command and I also ran Azure account so I could download and import my uh, published settings for my Azure account what I'll do now is just get a list of the websites that I have on my account and after that I'm gonna create a new site we're gonna call it Proto One. it's gonna ask me in which geography I want to create this specific website and I'm just gonna choose West Europe and it's going to create it on this address right here iocprod01.azurewebsites.net I can use Azure Portal to open a browser and go to the portal right now I'm going to log in with my credentials and after I log in on Windows Azure I'm just going to use uh, Visual Studio Online and the upload facilities to upload the files on my MonoDevelop project as you can see, you can see in this account, I have the new website that I created, IOC Prod Zero One. I can click on Configure, and then I can scroll down to PHP, sorry, to Visual Studio Online mode. I can save, and once the configuration is updated, I can go to Dashboard, and I can click on Edit with Visual Studio Online. This is a preview feature that will open a new tab on my browser and will allow me to see the project. In this case, this is a, an empty workspace because I haven't uploaded anything. So I'm just going to use the upload facilities. I'm going to go to the specific project that I have now. And I'm going to upload all the files. And I can also upload files that are part of a folder in in this case my assemblies and I can create a folder and just drag them in now I have moved all the files that I had in my ASP.NET project creating in mono to Windows Azure using Visual Studio Online on Firefox and Debian what I'll do now is come back to the Windows Azure portal and click on browse and now I have my application with the features that I already implemented offline. This concludes this part of the, of the uh, demos around using Windows Azure, .NET, and other Microsoft technologies within Linux and other open source technologies. I want to show you some more examples on how we can use Visual Studio Online to uh, edit a project file from a Linux machine running Firefox, for example, or any other modern browser, uh, even if we didn't have WebMatrix or Visual Studio installed. This is the website with the ASP.NET application that I already built. I can go to Edit in Visual Studio Online, and I can start changing, for example, the layout. If you remember, the site looked like this. Simple button, click me, and then some functionality. For example, I could edit the default.aspx file and I could add something like click me now, which is going to be just a simple layout change when compared to the rest of the uh, project. When I reload this application, I have the click me now and the logic continues to work just as expected. Another example, even with a bigger project, uh, uh, we can use Orchard, for example, a .NET open source CMS. I have already deployed this in the 02 side, and I can go to Configure, I can enable Visual Studio Online, I can save the configuration file, and after it updates, I can go back to the dashboard and select Edit in Visual Studio Online. 
This particular site looks like this. It's just the main file in the first step of the installation and setup of Orchard. What I'm going to do now is just search for some common uh, strings using the Visual Studio um, search function. So I'm going to search by get started. I can use regular expressions and uh, even case matching which makes it real simple to find what you need even inside uh, really large projects. As you can see I've found an index.cshtml file which I can edit if I need to. For example, get started with open source on Microsoft. Just as a reminder, look at the entire project and all the folders and files it has. I don't need to rebuild in case it's a simple layout change thing using Visual Studio Online. Now when I reload the site, the layout has changed. But what if uh, we need to change things on the behavior of the actual application? There are some thing, interesting things we can do. Let's go back to the 01 side and use the Edit in Visual Studio Online function. Now I'll try to change a little bit of the logic on how it's working. If you remember the code behind files, this the .cs files already had this um, logic that we defined. We're just gonna make it go back to one, and we're gonna delete the rest of the things that we did inside this uh, refactoring uh, method. So we're gonna remove all the references to view state, and we're just gonna have it do one every time I click on it. Even though the file has, has been saved because Visual Studio Online automatically does it, the binaries which are executed and called from the ASP.NET applications have not. So this is where we can use the console to just make a very quick MS build. In this case failed because some of the files are related to local uh, targets. This is very simple to solve because I can open the csproj file and I can find the offending line, I can remove it, and I can do any other house cleaning that I need in order for the MS build to succeed. When I run MS build now, the project has done building. And if I browse the site now, as you can see, I can continue clicking and it's only gonna go one. So I just MS build on console and not necessarily Visual Studio or Mono Develop to specifically change the behavior of an ASP.NET site using Visual Studio Online from a Firefox browser on Debian Linux. I'm going to show you some portability of applications developed with Mono Develop on Linux on a Windows 8.1 machine. I'm using PowerShell 3.0 and basically what I'm going to do now is just call the executable file that we built on the Linux machine. As you can see it behaves exactly as expected. But one interesting thing that I can do with PowerShell on Windows 8.1 is that I can actually load the DLL file that comes with the specific uh, executable and I create it as a separate project. I just need to use a type, pass the path argument, and specify the path to the local DLL file. Now I can, for example, declare or instantiate new members of the class by saying things like member equals my library dot my class and I can autocomplete inside PowerShell because the uh, .NET assembly has been fully loaded. When I examine this file, I get that it's a system.object. This is just an example of how the low-level executable files and the libraries can also be ported into Windows 8.1 even when developed with model development Linux. In this Linux machine, we're going to clone the live SDK sample GitHub repository that has that contains some solutions that you can uh, use and consume from your existing uh, model develop file. So what I'll do now is open model develop and I'll browse to the solution that is already on this uh, SDK file. So as you can see we have samples ASP.NET and I'll go to SkyCMD and I'll choose the solution file that is inside the project. Now I have loaded the file and I have loaded the entire solution into MS, uh, into Mono Develop, and I can start doing some cleanup so we can compile and run this on the existing um, 
system now. First of all, we notice that there is a missing file in the project, so we can safely remove it from the project. Also, we notice that there is a webrel.cs file that contains some Windows Sasha specific information we don't need for this specific uh, demo, so we can also remove it from the project. And finally, we realize that this file, default.aspx, is calling a side.master file under uh, apparently a home directory, but this file doesn't exist. It actually sits in the same directory as default.aspx, and since Linux is case sensitive, we're also going to use this, uh, uh, put this on an upper case just so it matches the file. So we said this. We also notice that all the files have different line endings coming from a Windows system, and MonoDevelop notices this and allows us to convert all the files so now the line endings comply with policy. It is time to build the project. We have no errors, and also to execute it. So now the browser will pop up, and hopefully I'll get to see the specific Sky CMD software that uh, has been included in the um, samples from the SDK team. Let me show you some final examples on how we can port, port applications between operating systems. Now I'm running Windows 8.1 with IE 11 and I'm going to use the IOC Prod01 project that we've been working on. This is an ASP.NET site created on MonoDevelop that I've been editing with uh, Visual Studio Online. Instead of choosing Visual Studio Online, I'll click on Web Matrix. This will open the local web matrix D client that I already have on my computer or web platform installer so I can install it if I don't have it. It's a free download for Windows 8, 8.1, other operating systems for client, and also for server. As you can see, I can edit the live site directly or local copy. And I can go to the files like default.aspx, for example, and change layout or anything that I need to do. I've changed a little bit of the layout here, and I, when I type Ctrl S, the file is being saved, saved remotely, and I can go back to Azure and click on Browse, and then I'll see the changes that I have committed from WebMatrix.